Greetings to my dear friends in Korea. It's an honor to be invited to be a part of your morning prayer times. And uh, I thank the leadership of your church that they would give me this opportunity. As we go to prayer this morning, I want to remind you of the tremendous power there is in calling on the name of the Lord and praying, whether it's in Korean or English or any other language in the world, because the real language that God hears is the language of the heart. When your heart, my heart, we go up to God with our requests. The early church <clears throat> that we read of in the book of Acts uh, was uh, very sure of the fact that prayer had tremendous power. They had watched Jesus for three and a half years pray and then minister, pray and then preach, be busy but then pray. And they remembered his words, men ought always to pray and never give up. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you'll find. And if you knock, it will be opened. So we find out in the book of Acts in chapter 12 that when a, a real time of trouble came to the church, their response was to shut down everything and pray. In Acts 12, we read, so Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. What precedes that in Acts 12 is the fact that Herod, the king then, uh, had James, the brother of John, put to death. He was persecuting the Christian church. And when he saw that it pleased the people, especially the religious leaders, that he killed a Christian leader, he locked up Peter, who was probably the senior elder and leader of the whole early church there in Jerusalem. He put him in chains in a dark dungeon, and there was no hope. And he was just waiting for Passover to come, the religious holiday, and then he was going to put Peter to death. And what's interesting is we see that the church, how they responded to this. They shut down everything, and a steady stream of prayer went up for Peter. What else could they do? They had no money. They had no influence with the government. They had no church buildings. All the things that we identify with Christianity today, uh, in many ways, they didn't know anything about that. They had no buildings. They had no influence. Everybody was against them. So they shut down everything and began to pray incessantly, like we're going to pray right now. And they were praying for Peter, for God's deliverance. I mean, it would be like you lose having your pastor put in prison and they're going to execute him. How would your church react? How would any church react? Well, the Bible says that they, a steady stream went up to God of prayer from the Christian church there in Jerusalem. You know, the Bible says there's a time for everything under the sun. There's a time for preaching. There's a time for singing. There's a time to be with your family. There's a time to study the Bible alone. And then there's a time collectively to pray. And the power that comes from that, no one has ever been able to totally understand. Well, what happened when the church did this? They just prayed. They just prayed. They cried to God. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Acts 12, verse 6, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell, and he struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. And then the angel told him to put his clothes on. And he walked right out of the prison. And when the last huge iron gate <clears throat> stood in front of them, the gate opened by itself. And Peter went back to the very place where the Christians were praying. And here was their answer right at the door. Their answer, answer to their prayers. Ask and you shall receive. Knock and it will be opened. 
I want you to just notice a couple of things here before I close about the power, the mighty power that came from their prayer. Number one, in that dark, filthy dungeon cell, Peter was helpless, chained, guards at the door, guards next to him. And suddenly a light shone from heaven and an angel appeared. When we pray, the greatest answer that we can get begins with something from heaven. Something you can't get in a bank. Something you can't get on a computer. Something you can't get from software. Something you can't get from the government. Something that no one else can do. God enters the situation. Something from heaven comes when people pray. That is the history of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. People pray and God comes down in some way some manner, some manifestation with grace and love and power and something happens that we call a miracle. God answers the prayer of his people. Wasn't God the one who said in the Old Testament, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will answer you. God is the one who invited us to do this. This isn't some thought that pastors have come up with. God invites us to come to him with our needs, with our, uh, our requests, our emergencies, our heartache, our wayward children, our confusion, our lack of peace. Whatever it might be, nothing's too big or hard for God. So something came from heaven. That's, by the way, the history of revival, the history of your country, the great revival that began in the north decades ago, Pyongyang, uh, when God poured out his spirit and the gospel spread all over Korea. That was a mighty revival. People were being converted. Churches were growing. Why? Something came from heaven. And every Korean pastor I've talked to who knows about that told me, Pastor Jim, people were praying. Just two more things. The angel touched Peter on the side of his head, and Peter woke up. When God's people pray, other people wake up. That's a picture of something deeper than just Peter getting up in the cell. Maybe you have family members. They're sleeping spiritually. They're sleeping. Maybe there are people in your churches. They're sleeping. They go to church, but spiritually, they're not awake to eternity, to God, to the shortness of time, to the value of a soul. They're just making money and go to church on Sunday. God can wake them up. If you have a wayward daughter or a wayward son, they're not serving the Lord. God can wake them up. God can come to them in the night as he did my daughter and give years ago and give her a dream and give your child a dream and, and show them what's really important about life, which is Jesus Christ and the salvation he offers. One last thing. When Peter woke up because of someone from heaven coming, the chains fell off his wrists. When people pray, chains are broken. When people pray, not only are people awakened, but chains that have been holding people back are broken. In the church I pastor in downtown Brooklyn in New York City, over the years that my wife and I have been there, I can't tell you all the miracles of chains being broken, chains of drug abuse, alcoholism, sexual perversion, everything you could possibly name. I, we've seen it broken, not by our power, but by the power of Jesus Christ when God's people are praying, Lord, save him, deliver her, get her back on the right track. So today in Korea, as you go to pray, know that God is listening. For the Bible says his ear is always open to the cry of his people. You might call someone on the phone and they cannot pick up. God is always picking up. His ear is always open. So as you pray today, ask God for great things because he's a great God. Don't ask God for little things. 
ask God for those things too. But nothing's too hard for God. That's what the Bible says. Is anything too hard for God? May God bless you as you pray with all your heart there in Korea. The Lord bless you.